friends, I am Sarah of BudgetGirl.com and the Budget Girl YouTube channel, and I'm so glad you are here. Today's video is actually a highly requested one, but I've been hesitant to do it for a while because I don't consider myself an expert in this yet, or really at many things at all. Uh, and it's how to find great renters and be a good landlord. I have had my duplex for about two years now, and I've had a total of three renters, if you're including Jacob, which I am, he pays. So I wanted to kind of combine forces with someone who I knew had a lot more experience in this to make sure to give you guys the best information possible. So today I have partnered with my friend Sarah, yes, another Sarah, so how can't she be awesome, from Nerd's Guide to FI. And I really think you're going to enjoy our conversation. This is a little bit of a longer video, but if you're interested in real estate investing, especially like managing properties yourself, I really think you'll get a bunch out of it. So we're going over how we screen tenants, how we manage our leases, fees, a few background checks, um, what mistakes we've made along the way, um, working with people in their different situations, um, red flags at, that we should have looked at or that we try to look out for and also how to how we try to be an ethical and good landlord which I think is a very important part of this conversation in the spirit of learning today's video is also sponsored by Skillshare I'm so glad that my friends over at Skillshare were up for this video as a sponsorship they're all about learning from people who have done things before you in the spirit of making things easier for yourself which I am all for Skillshare is a massive online learning platform that has no ads and they bring to you these really compact lessons that can teach you how to do things better in your everyday life. Only that I found really interesting was Mastering Productivity, Creating a System That Works For You by Thomas Frank. He's a fellow YouTuber and kind of a productivity expert. And what I like to do with these types of things is his whole system might not work for you perfectly, but you can usually take something out of it and figure out how to use that to better your own life. So what I take from his class was that if you institute a review day where you kind of check in on your previous week and set new goals, that I think that was something I was missing in my current system. And I think I'm going to try it going forward. So I hope you can do that same thing with some of my videos. Even if all of everything that I say doesn't work for you, you can take something and use it to improve your life. And if you're interested in signing up for Skillshare, you can do so at the link below. There's a special offer just for Budget Girl viewers if you use that link. So check it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's go to the video. Hi friends, I'm Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet. And today I have a highly requested video from you guys. So ever since you found out that I was a landlord and I was <laughs> renting out part of my home, to somebody else you've asked me how do you find good tenants now i've only had two tenants so i didn't feel particularly like an expert in this so i'm actually bringing my friend sarah yes hey. also sarah we have here. great names yeah we have a great name <laughs> here because she is kind of an expert landlord she's been doing this for a lot longer we've been friends on the internet you can catch her at nerds guide to fi we also have a shared love of spreadsheets we do and she and i today are going to talk about how we run our rentals yeah. um essentially how we pick good tenants how we process everything month to month and all sorts of other tips. I'm super excited. Yeah, so Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself and your landlording experience. So I'm Nerds Guide to FI, if you guys wanna check me out on Instagram. Um, but I started out, we both started out as Dave Ramsey people and then have slowly evolved to the life of a landlord somehow. Yeah. And so I feel like we bond over our mutual love of budgets and spreadsheets. So that's kind of how I grew. Um, I've been a landlord since 2018. And so I've now inherited tenants, I've placed tenants, and I've gotten rid of a tenant before now. So I feel like I have a bit of experience under my belt. And I'm excited to chat with you guys. And how many properties have you had over how many years? So we scaled up to four units and then sold those this year. And now I have four by myself. So I have a duplex and then a house hack. I, I count <laughs> both of my doors because technically I, I rent to my boyfriend, Jacob. Yeah. Um, that said, he's fairly easy to please. Yeah. I just have a dog and a toddler and they're freeloaders. So it's not <laughs> very helpful. <laughs> Let's get right into it. How do you pick good renters that aren't going to tear up your place, squat, 
get bugs in all over the place or throw wild parties. You know, it's hard because I don't think you can ever prevent like all scenarios because I've totally ended up in a bad like renter situation mm -hmm. myself. Um, ironically, in my own house hack, which is not great because they're in your basement. But I think really just doing your due diligence and taking your time screening and mm -hmm. developing a system of how to do that. So we'll maybe both talk about like the system we've both been following to really get through tenant screening because I think I've deviated from my plan a couple times and it never works out well. So I think knowing your process and sticking to it and being like, no, this is my business, my property. If you want to rent, these are my steps. Because as soon as I get off the tracks, it's ended badly for me. So processes work. <laughs> yeah. So I inherited a tenant when I first bought the place, but I've since replaced them with the tenant that I screened myself. And to rent out the unit once it was ready, I uh, actually did pre-rental but while the old tenants were still in there and I signed contract and everything. And what I did was I put it up on Facebook Marketplace with mm -hmm. the original empty pictures and then uh, did a Google form where I sent anyone who inquired because I had hundreds of people yeah. At over a hundred at least people inquire on Facebook marketplace mostly is this available can I move in tomorrow kind of thing yeah. and I did just an auto response on it saying like hi if you're interested in the house go to this Google form and you can fill it out now some people that might feel kind of annoying but mm -hmm. yes it is available but it's available on this date here's the Google form and if you're not willing to fill out a simple Google form that has just the basic information that you have to give if you're gonna move into a house, yeah. name, address, income, yeah. all sorts of stuff like that, then that really screened out like 95% of the people because yeah. I only had three or four people fill out the Google form. So I started out in the exact same process and honestly, I'm going back to the same thing because I just love it. Like I love, so I use Google Forms and then the Google Form, there's like a button you can click on and it'll put it into a Google Sheet and then I can, because we like spreadsheets. I just wanna see it in a spreadsheet. I didn't know it could do that. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I'll show, well, I'll send you this Please guide that put together and you can have it for free and then you can review online how easy it is. So then your forms auto populate into this spreadsheet and then I can like color code like red's a no, green's a yes, and then yellow's like I emailed them but they're not really getting back to me. Because we do have to keep records of who applied exactly. just in case there's, what's what's it called? If we're trying to discriminate. Yeah, yeah. so we don't discriminate. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to have a place where I could keep all the things and then be able yeah. to defend why I didn't rent to one person over another. Yeah. So this is why we wanted to have this talk today so I can change lives with this little but No, it's so <laughs> handy. I didn't know it the first time I did it and reviewing, I think I printed out everyone's forms like I'm old school. And once I figured out the spreadsheet option, it was phenomenal because I got over a hundred inquiries whenever I list a property on Facebook. So uh -huh. do the same thing. Automated messages save lives. Like I'm like, fill out this form. If people don't want to fill out the form, I tell them, you know, thank you for your interest. I'm sorry. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've had people ask if they, if there's any other way to like see the house or they try to change your process but yeah a few times yeah that's been a red flag for me I had a lady ask if I could print her a copy and send it to her by mail and I said no <laughs> because I also require online rent collections I'm like part of this is a test like can you follow like basic rules when we get to the rent collection I mean, this phase? is like a like, this is like an eight to ten question form yeah I some of them are like check mark yeah things and mine are just like check the boxes like I think I have 14 questions but only because I've added more on vaping and marijuana use after my bad experience <laughs> Yeah. So I'm very detailed in those questions. So you review all of those and for you, has there generally been just like one person? Do you show it to a few people? Do you show it to one person? Um, usually I get like 10 or so that are pretty good. Mm -hmm. So the last time I had a ton of good people apply and so I made an A, a B, and a C. Like I almost felt like it was like a wedding list when people have like a really tiny venue and they're like, let's send out all the A invites and if they can't come, we'll like pull people from like the B team like up on this list. And so I started out with that list and sent emails and then I went to the next list after that. And so I think I made it through my whole B list before I found the right fit. Really? Yeah. And that's like showing the property to each person? Yeah. So I wow. showed, my last one I showed it to, my lists are not very long, five people I think. So out of like 10 people, essentially you have like three on each list roughly math not mm, mm, the one is floating somewhere in there uh -huh. <laughs> and then from there you you know I would reach out to them and kind of go from there I guess with my recent I must have just gotten lucky because out of like the three or four people that filled out the form two didn't have near the income to support a $1,200 apartment right a month uh, one had some other giant red flag yeah and then the fourth was a perfect candidate I, I called her I, I showed her the house and I and I signed her and then I took the thing down yeah so it the first time I ever listed my house hack, it was so easy. It was like the first person that applied was like perfect with mm -hmm. the, like a higher credit score than I have. Like, like Runner so has a higher good. credit score than I do. I know. I was so <laughs> mad. I'm like, I mean, like, I think that's very impressive. They were 
<laughs> Ellie and Nestor is that I'm like, your credit score is better than mine. I've never been beaten before. <laughs> it was like five points, but no, she she yeah. beat me. She beat yeah. me. Yeah. She was in the 800 club, and I'm like, it was 7.99 or something at the time, and I was like, come on, lady. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's absolutely cool. wonderful. So let's talk for a second about red flags for tenants because if you can avoid a problem now, yeah. you're avoiding many, many future problems. So please yeah. tell me your horror stories. Okay, so first I should say like, okay, so you're trying to build a lifestyle when you think about picking tenants. So for me, I have a full-time job and so I don't have a lot of time to devote to like, this is, sounds terrible, babysit people. Like mm -hmm. I just don't wanna do a lot of hand-holding. I just wanna be able to set you up online, have you auto pay the rent and have us go about our merry way. If you have problems, just let me know. But I don't wanna have constant issues. And so kind of going through this application process, I think the multiple steps of like Facebook posts to a Google form to then an in-person tour to then a credit check. Yeah, we forgot to talk about the whole, credit So there's a credit check. So yeah. how I do it now is I do Facebook posting, Google Sheet, from the Google Sheet, I will email or call them. I email them now. Email them and set up a time to see it. I'll show it to two to four people. Um, I did five on my last time, I think. And then only the people that I'm really interested in, I'll credit check the, my number one candidate. And then if they, for some reason, don't qualify, I'll credit check the next person. So the person who gets the house is hopefully the only one paying for the credit check. Yeah, and you make them pay for it, right? Yes, yeah, I do. I do all of this through Avail myself. I don't know what you've been using, but. it's a, I, I used apartments.com, which I think you said you used to use. Yeah, so I used apartments.com when it was still cozy. Dot co. Mm -hmm. So if you guys remember Cozy being a thing, it's now apartments.com. Everyone's getting acquired. So Avail is now realtor.com. They do really the same things Cozy does, except I can do my leases electronically and not have to dock you sign. Oh, is that new? Do they have, I haven't I, done Cozy at all. I did it entirely on apartments.com. I uploaded my lease and it nice. sent it to her and then it sent it back to me and it sent us both and it saves it. Oh. Yeah, and I can also set up like a different fee for like lawn. Nice. And stuff like that. Yeah. So like there's the full breakdown. It was it was really easy. I was yeah. surprised. I honestly thought it was gonna be a more difficult process, but yeah, I set okay. up an account and I sent her the link to pay, it was like $25 for a credit and a background check, mm -hmm. and she paid it, and they came back, and they sent it to me. I get to read it, mm -hmm. look through it, any issues, and then I can submit the lease to her, she signs it, mm -hmm. and then we're all good, and now she yeah. submits her payment through there, and it comes to me, and I believe we were talking earlier that it's if it's just like a, uh, she sets up like direct bank transfer, it's yeah. free for both parties, so I'm yeah. not getting any fees, she's not getting any fees, Right. And it just shows up in my account. Yeah. And the nice thing with both, I know both platforms too, you can set it up so your tenant builds their credit up by having like on time rent collection history too. So that's mm -hmm. an option on their side, which is pretty cool. So yeah. like being like, well, you're running, you should build your credit score. Like that's kind of the dream is to, you know, mm -hmm. pay your rent on time. Now we're both incentivized. Like I want you to pay rent on time and yeah. you're benefiting too. So absolutely. And since everything's electronic, that's really great for bookkeeping. And I can just show my accountant at the end of the year, this is how much I got for rent. And there's all those receipts. Right. So and you can print like reports out of, I think both of them do reports mm -hmm. where you can print like your rent roll out and print all of that, which is really nice. So. And set up different properties on there. I just have the one right now. Yeah. But yeah, that's okay. I have a, I have a couple now, so we're building it out slowly but steadily. Um, and then with, I think my credit score reports are more expensive. I think it was like $30 for a credit check and 30 for an eviction, but it's like a bundled report. It was like 50 bucks. So a little more pricey. Um, I also told them if they absolutely couldn't pay that much, then we'd find somewhere else. But it's like a $1,200 like a month rent. I'm like 50 bucks in the grand scheme, hopefully. It's going to make yeah. a break situation or uh, that's a red flag. <laughs> well, yeah. And if they're not willing to for undergo a background or a credit check, there's right. probably something happening. Right. We were just talking about this before we hopped on where I'm like, I always tell people like give them a chance to let me know if there's gonna be anything that pops up on their background mm -hmm. check. I learned this from um, Liz and Dan from Mindful Money Coaches. They said like they sit down their people and they say, you know, if I'm gonna find anything, like tell me now. Like there's yeah. lots of we can forgive, like people change, people grow. Mm -hmm. You know, your life may have been different, you know, five years ago and you've totally turned it around. Just mm -hmm. tell me because surprises are not something we do. There's a difference. I mean, I'm not looking for a perfect mm -hmm. report or a perfect credit score. Right. You would probably be buying your, a house yourself in most cases, but right. if you're gonna rent from me and like, let me know. If, right. I had one person submit one that wanted to tenant with me and uh, he had five or six old accounts 
in collections from apartment complexes yeah. and I was like and we're done and they were recent they were like a year oh yeah old. so this guy had mm -hmm. been hopping from apartment complex to apartment complex and yep. then leaving with yeah, uh you can't do that and they had to bring out collections on him and I'm like no you're not you're not living here the right. same problem's gonna happen I so. had a tenant say she had no problems no evictions no anything we got to the background check phase and she had two evictions and she's like oh I didn't even know those would show up um I was in a like a terrible like situation with an ex-husband and I had to get out and then he stopped paying rent and my name was still on it and it was like this horrible thing but then she had one like the year before also at a different mm -hmm. housing edition and I'm like, I have left a not great relationship, but the fact is you didn't tell me up front. Like you didn't let me know like, hey, this is going on. Like, would you be lenient? She like flat out lied on all her application. Yeah. And I'm like, I am willing to help people because I get it. Like I know how hard it is, but I also, I can't do lying. Yeah, so that was if you're lying about me. this. Right, because then. I'm like, my heart goes out to her because maybe it was a bad situation, but hiding it makes me nervous. Yeah. And I didn't want that to be a thing going forward. Yeah, and let's be honest, landlords get a lot of flack on the internet, but these properties are huge and investments for us they're yeah. part of our livelihoods they're part of my livelihood they're yeah. your entire livelihood they're literally my entire life <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i mean i have a full-time day job but if the day job collapses suddenly then i well, really it, i mean it matters a squatter or someone who's going to tear up the place and cause tens of thousand dollars worth of damage is something we need to prevent for right. our own futures if at all possible yeah I mean, yeah th things happen but yeah because the goal is to eventually exit the day job that takes all of our time up and you know do real estate but you can't really do that if the real estate's not supporting itself we both have day jobs and we both have rental yeah <laughs> rental <laughs> or <properties. plural. laughs> so we're gonna count you as plural you have two units I, I do technically have the two units both of us are kind of a little modern and we want everything to be done online we don't necessarily want to handhold people my tenants been great i literally only get contacted if there's a problem yeah like you know the washer went out or yeah. something else went out or there's a problem like that right. which is wonderful because then we can go deal with it but other tenant I know that property managers and landlords have had to deal with tenants who have like excuse after excuse, like rent, yeah. you know, everything's always a problem and they have to do kind of the hand holding. Have you had that situation? I've had it twice. So I've had great inherited tenants and I've had inherited tenants that like send the check and say like, oh, it's in the mail and it probably wasn't in the mail and then I'm waiting and then they like, they said they sent it to one address, but then they didn't send it to that address. And so you're just like chasing down paper checks because it was like the first month I inherited mm -hmm. this person. And conveniently, she was on a month to month lease. And I'm like, listen, like, I'm going to say, like, I'm not going to renew your lease next month unless you can like start paying online like all of my other tenants do because this is just, I have the systems and this is how it has to work. And she was able to get it together, but I think she got away with misbehaving for a really long time from her landlord company and kind of ran them around. Because then in the future, she ended up paying late a lot by like the 11th or 12th. And I'm like, let's just extend out like your payment due date a little bit and see if we can get you like a bigger window. So I had her rent like late on the 10th versus the 5th. And then okay. she didn't have like as many problems. Well, that's good. So it, we ended up working out really well. Because I'm like, is it a paycheck cycle thing? Like, where are you at? And it ended up being like an irregular pay thing that was just, mm -hmm. you know, so you're willing to be flexible. Yeah, you like, have to be have reasonable, to but I also like need to be paid every month and like mailing it in the check and playing that like rodeo roulette. Like I'm not gonna mm. communicate every month with you on that. Like send it through online payment and if it's late, you pay a fee and if I'll work with you within reason. <laughs> my inherited tenants, so I, I messed up my system. So usually I, you know, do this like questionnaire and then I show them the house. And this time I got a phone call from an insurance company wanting to put this tenant in my property because her house burned down. So there was an electrical fire in her home. And so Allstate was gonna pay like, or whatever insurance company, State Farm, Allstate, I can't mm -hmm. remember who now was gonna pay for her to live there. And she moved in and immediately moved her boyfriend in with her that she never put on the lease. Mm -hmm. He was up like wait, wait weird hours. Um, and then they started smoking marijuana in my basement. He walked into the house and I'm like, like my, I had contractors working in my bathroom and they're like, it smells like you're hot boxing in here. I'm like, oh my goodness, no. Like, do not say that when you walk in my house. And then they were smoking cigarettes, like, out on the back porch, which I said, like, nowhere on the property are we going to allow this because I live in, like, kind of near a subdivision area. Mm -hmm. And the neighbors would not be thrilled. And I would not be thrilled. And so I ended up well, giving I mean, you her, have to like, agree to these things when you go right. in. And so I'd send her, like, per the lease, like, here's your email, like, your written proof of, like, the violation. And she was on, like, violation four. And I finally was able to get her to break the lease, actually. She ended up saying, 
that she wanted to leave, which was awesome. Because I kept giving her quit notices, or like notices. But you said you had kind of, so you didn't make her apply and go through your normal process. You yeah. kind of skipped it because of the insurance. I didn't make her, it. so when insurance called me about the listing on Facebook, I answered and then I didn't make her do the questionnaire. And so then when she came and walked the property, I didn't really know what to ask about because I kind of use the questionnaire as like, like I kind of, I'll read it before the person walks through it with me and ask them questions about different things they fill out and I had nothing to go off of with her. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like a, she didn't talk a lot. She seemed really nice. The boyfriend wasn't there and I just missed, I feel like a lot of information because I was so caught up in the insurance company offered to pay. Which is the guaranteed money. Guaranteed money, $400 a month more than my asking rent because it was a short term. It was an eight month lease. Mm -hmm. And so I saw dollar signs and forgot everything else that was important. <laughs> like, so I'm like, oh my, I'm making money off my house hack. This is awesome. And it lasted for 23 days. <laughs> oh my God. Four violations in 23 days. Four violations in 23 days. And then yeah. she had to go. <laughs> so let's just rapid fire a few more red flags that we've seen or experienced. So yeah. for me, if you're like, you message me immediately combative. Like yes. you've got a problem with the Google form. Yeah. Like, and you don't want to answer those questions or something like that. I've had a lady say, I will put the full cash deposit down today. Can I just hold this? Don't show it to anyone else. And she ended up being the lady with those two evictions I was talking about. Oh, or I guess, do you consider it a red flag if somebody wants to like pay the entire or months at a time in cash up front or yeah. pay like a ton of money? I haven't front. personally experienced it yet, but I hear it's a really big red flag because everyone's like, yes, I'll take the money now. But then you're kind of stuck with that person for the next you know, year if things don't work out or there's some other red flag that happens. Like there's usually a reason they want to stick down that much money yeah. right at the top. And so. not be responsible for yeah. paying it. I've heard that's a really good red flag. I've yet to experience that. Maybe somebody deposit. Maybe somebody can tell me why someone would want to do this. Yes. Yeah. and what it could potentially mean. Because I've never heard of it in a positive situation. Like, yeah, that's great if you have, you know, $12,000 to put down for rent for the next 12 months, but right. why would you want to hand me that right now? And it probably depends on the circumstances too. Like, what is their job situation? Like, mm -hmm. if they're trying to do this and they don't have a job, like, that's much more a red flag. Because I'm like, someday that money runs out and now what? Yeah. So I still need to like meet income criteria. You still need to have criteria. So when you, you know, are trying to prove you're not discriminating, you're like, yes, I make this people have the same amount of like, income level and you know you have minimums in your criteria maybe we should talk about that for a second yeah. what are your basic minimum requirements i like rent to be at a minimum three times rent, rent. or income um, in monthly income and that's gross is that for each person on the lease or combined combined but i think ideally i like four times but i live in a pretty high income earning area um there's Every RV in the United States except for one is manufactured where I live and they're just like really, like with a hot college degree you can make like $80,000 out of school. And so people just have really high incomes. So okay. I can be- well, If you're making 80 grand, grand then you can afford a $1,200 a month rent. Right, yeah. So usually there's kind of like some other situation going on then when people want to rent because a lot of people are easily bankable. Yeah. I prefer you to have at least good credit. Yep. Yeah, not bad credit or fair credit, but right. at least good credit because yeah. I do believe credit matters. And if you don't yes. have at least good credit, then there's probably some negative marks that are going to show up on your credit right. report. And I do think that's really interesting because I think until I like, and you can probably appreciate this, until I held a credit report in my hands, I was like, I don't really know what you look at on a credit report, but it is fascinating to me. And it is immediately obvious. It is immediately obvious what's going on because I'm like, I don't really have a minimum credit score. I mean, I think if it's a really low score, like if you're below like a 300. Like, I mean, there's just really bad scenarios, but I've seen people be part of these like debt repair programs essentially put all their debts into collection and it just terrorizes their credit scores. But it's fascinating what you can learn. I like to look at the credit part to see on time payment history mm -hmm. and what they're choosing to pay off and not pay off is very interesting too. Like, if and you're choosing to pay Victoria's Secret but not your rent, that's a red flag for me. Well, if you just have a ton of debt on your credit report, yeah. that that's a much higher obligation that you have financially than exactly. And, and I mean, we're both Dave people. We're, yeah. we're originally Dave people, so some yeah. people are probably going to get mad in the comments yeah. about this. They are. Uh, we mad. both think a credit store is an important thing. We check those for our rentals. Right. I've had my credit checked every single place I've rented. Yeah. And it was important and it is important. And I think nowadays, like people don't realize how much your credit score touches. Like we can be Dave Ramsey, per like fanatics all day long. But if it, like for my job that I just took in May in like corporate America, they checked my credit score for it. Yeah. And it's just crazy because I'm like, I don't even work in finance. I work in like healthcare and pharmaceuticals. 
and so it's just a crazy world out there so i think a credit score still tells a good idea of like how good are you are making payments and we have to kind of go off something because you're that's a big chunk of money you're asking someone to pay you every month and yeah. so you just want to feel secure with that absolutely and so if i see a credit report that has just you know 14 store cards and you've got all these past due balances and you've got old debt from yeah. in collections from this that and the other thing you're making technically three times the yeah amount but you've got you know thousands of dollars or hundreds of right usually thousands of dollars of debt that you also every month that kind of changes you into a slightly less desirable candidate yeah sorry but it it does right it, when totally. it comes time to yeah. pay you've only got your paychecks only going to go so far if something negative happens are you going to choose to pay the credit card are you going to choose to pay rent what's going to yeah. happen it really paints you a good picture so love it or hate it we're both team credit report yeah so absolutely <laughs> also last time i rented because they ran my credit report and i had such good credit i didn't have to pay a deposit Oh, that's nice. I've never heard of that before, but that would be a good reason. I would that, definitely be incentivized. That like, saved me 500 bucks. Yeah. That's a lot of, that's a lot of furniture and like different things mm -hmm. you can be doing. Yeah. So the world is kinder to people with good credit. I know I've totally changed too because the world of real estate kind of opens your eyes, but I mean, jobs, insurance companies, like just everything are asking for it nowadays. And so I think it's just a metric and you can use it wisely. But I think people definitely get hyper-focused on it. Like, I don't really care what people's exact score is. I just wanna see, like, overall you're financially well. So the final thing I wanna cover is, you know, sometimes it's not the tenants that are shitty, it's the landlords. So how do you spot a good landlord that's actually going to take care of the property, yeah. treat you fairly, and not make you end up on a Reddit with a painted over cro cockroach. Which Omer, if is... you have not seen the painted over cockroach, it looks like he's doing a dance with his leg out, but yeah. he definitely was just painted right over. Yeah, so. honestly, disgusting. So what are, your, what are your thoughts on how to spot a good landlord if you're a yeah. renter? I've definitely rented a lot over the years, so I went to college for a really long time, and I've done a lot of student rentals, and there's definitely, I think it's just how they maintain the property. Like, you always want to get a tour of it, obviously, after completing their application. Tour of the, of the display unit, or a tour of, like, the whole property? I want to see the exact home I'm living in. Yeah. Very different. <laughs> the display unit yes. often does not paint a correct picture. Yes. I've toured just the display unit, and then went on move-in day to my own apartment. It didn't have carpet. Like, it was, like, literally subfloor with, like, tack strips. And I'm like, this would have been a no from me. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to like get some floors in here. Yeah, I've moved so. into so many like really dirty, disgusting apartments that were obviously not cleaned. The yeah. landlords either didn't like care. Yeah. So I would say one way to definitely spot a good landlord is to see if they have any processes. So like, is the process they put a thing on Facebook and they're just like text me, and then when yeah. you text them, it's like, sup yeah it's seven hundred dollars yeah and like if they actually have systems in place like we were talking about to screen you and to get your information and to get everything kind of above board yeah i love people that have like good like they like do move in move out checklists and it's very mm -hmm. streamlined like i've stayed at two places now that they literally will like itemize like if you break a blind this is how much we charge you if you you know break the stove this is how much we're going to charge you very and clear just, expectations the expectations are very clear and the rent collection process is very clear and so i think talking about you know what what your experience will be like as a tenant can be helpful because you know those systems help so like you're not angry when you leave like if yeah. i broke you know a blind i know exactly how much is that going to cost off my security it's not going to be a surprise but yeah. a huge amount and i think like managing expectations is important on both ends and i think that's like the key like if you know what you're both are like signing up for i would also check like the cleanliness of the unit and the property and also read your lease very carefully to make sure that there's nothing weird in there and make the sure that it leases i never read were a lot <laughs> and i regret that because i mean it ended up fine for me but i think like the poor tenant that i had to you know remove after 23 days like maybe if she would have read the lease she would have figured out this house isn't for her and i remember telling her like i'm so sorry like i know a lot of places maybe this behavior is okay but it isn't because i live here and like this is very clearly outlined in the lease agreement and so i think it probably would have saved her some time and energy if she knew her Having boyfriend was going to move in and she knew she was going to be doing those activities like this just isn't the house reading your lease very important yeah what else i talked to a friend of mine and they said 
their landlord has like lawn maintenance because they're very particular about like how the landscaping looks and i'm like oh i bet you have like a really nice apartment and it was and it was just like a, it's like a pride of ownership like they want the exterior to look good and i think that says a lot about how they take care of their properties and will Ooh, take care yeah. of you like, so if, if you go and look at the place and it's do a drive-by yeah yeah oh absolutely drive yeah. by do it and if it's dingy and gross maybe drive by at night so maybe and, even before you walk through it uh -huh. drive by it and make sure like is this really what you want to be in because uh -huh. uh, the property is probably not going to change for you yeah maybe you're renting a single family home and right. you're you'll be responsible for maintenance mm -hmm. if the maintenance that's been done so far is not good yeah. so say you've got like a really ancient washing machine and there's a roach painted on the wall and so everything no. looks kind of cobbled together then that yeah. probably gives you a little bit of a clue as to how the landlord will deal with maintenance issues in the future yeah. so if you are going to have to call them for x y or z do you are they Ooh, actually going to show up and you can talk up? to any of the tenants if they happen to be Ooh, there that would yes. be my dream like moment i've done like that please yes yeah, so when i bought my duplex that had tenants in it and like tell me all the things and they were just like so excited to tell me about like that their landlord just like slapped things together and didn't really improve uh -huh. things and they will tell you all the things and neighbors so, will too absolutely when so i've been use phone a friend like ask around and see if people know and they don't particularly care usually right if they're leaving <laughs> Uh, they're not typically incentivized to lie to you, I guess, but yeah. maybe not in every scenario, but landlord might not like it if you, you know, yeah. knock on their tenant's door and be like, Hey, I'm considering renting this place. Is yeah. your landlord an asshole? But again, like if my, if a person was touring one of my houses and they asked my tenants how they like me, I wouldn't be worried about no. it. No, no, I wouldn't either. So I think my maybe old, that my old tenant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they were, their lease was not renewed for a reason. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the lady who I removed after 23 days probably were not friends, but no, but my, my current tenant would say, <laughs> Say very nice things about me, right? Because uh, she follows her lease. Exactly. Honestly, as landlords, it's really not that hard. Yeah. Follow the lease. Yeah, yeah. If both parties just do what they the expectation is, it works out well. It's just sometimes that doesn't always happen, and then I think people on both ends get bad reps. Like yeah. people like. I get really sick of the online posts being like section eight tenants. I'm like, that's a wonderful program. Yeah. Like there are good and bad in every category. Like I have a higher end rental and I've almost had a harder time filling that one than my like very B B minus like working class neighborhood houses. Like I get the best families for that house. It's just, you know, ridiculous. So I, I hate when people just like, like, kind of bias their decisions based on you know yeah. where people's funding is coming from so sarah thank you so much for sharing all of your landlording knowledge where can people find you um so i live on instagram literally i think i'm on there an unhealthy amount like all of my screen time is instagram on my phone so check me out at nerds guide fi on instagram i also have a blog and a podcast by the same name and i just put out courses on my blog too that give you some tools for landlords um i have like a free credit score course that i just stuck on there but mostly it's it's all about how to find good tenants so so you have a whole course on how to find good tenants. I have tenants. a whole course and there's two handbooks there's a whole handbook on lease clauses that I like to add and a whole handbook on like tenant screening and how you can use a Google form and put it in a Google sheet with some arrows and some like helpful charts I need this so, thing it's great <laughs> it will be linked below Sarah's course so thank, thank you, you so much for this coming so much on today I hope you guys enjoyed this you've been asking for this video for quite a bit of time I just wasn't comfortable with having only two tenants so I hope you uh, learned a lot from Sarah here and I hope you go follow her thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video today I hope everyone got something out of it and um, please tell me below if you're interested in real estate investing or landlording and uh, if you already do, what you do differently from Sarah and I. You can find Sarah at the links below and check out Skillshare while you're down there as well. All right, bye.